name's David Troy, and this is the David Troy Salmon. So we're going to be doing a round layer today. So this video is a little bit longer than my normal videos, but let's just break the haircut down. So I start off by sectioning off a wagon wheel pattern from the center point of the head. Now obviously you don't have to do this on your client, but I do it to show you the sections I'm going to be taking. Now everyone does this haircut a little bit different. This is just my version of the haircut. Now when you do a client, you're not going to section it off like this. You're just going to go through the haircut as normal, but knowing where your sections are always helps. The very first thing is determine the length of the haircut. As you can see, I've stopped the parting right under the occipital bone. This bottom part, we're going to bring straight down and I'm going to determine the length. When I do this haircut, I like to leave it just below the hairline. Wherever the hairline is on the client, I normally take it about an inch below the hairline just to give him that little bit of room. I am going to speed up parts of this haircut, otherwise you're not going to watch the whole thing. I'm using the Tony and Guy cutting comb, which I love, but I'm not using the wide part or the wide tooth of the comb, I'm using the other end. And the idea is just to bring it straight down, not a lot of tension on the hair, and just determine the length. And I'm just using the very ends of my scissors here, which you can see. I'm not pushing the hair, I'm just creating a nice guideline to start the haircut off. As I was saying before, look, everyone does this haircut a little bit different. This is just my version. The reason why I'm using the very tip of the scissor is because if you use further back in the blade you start end up pushing the hair away and it doesn't create a nice line and i'm just going to work my way up to the occipital bone i'm going to speed this up just so we can get through it remember there's no tension on the hair i'm bringing it straight down and even if you pick up the section we're still keeping a light tension on the hair because we don't want to create any graduation here yet just working all the way up to just under the occipital bone. Now we've created the length, we're going to connect the rest of the haircut with that round layer that we first talked about. But we're going into where the occipital bone is, so I'm going to bring everything out at 90 and pull it directly out, but just taking the shortest point and following it all the way up. What I like to do with that first section is actually just take the section all the way through to the very top or the very point center point of the haircut. And then as I take the next section, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to follow that all the way up. We're working up to the center point of the head or the center point of the haircut and just working through the back, following all the way to the bottom of the ear. And you can see my cutting point or my stand where I'm cutting is changing throughout each section. Now typically I wouldn't normally do this, but I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera so you can actually see what's going on. And then I'm just going to do the exact same thing on the other side, working all the way around, working all the way through the back. You can see I'm stopping right behind the ear, over directing it back just a little bit to keep a little bit of weight on that corner bottom part. Okay, so let's move on to the side. Now that we've cut all the back, we're going to move on to the side section. I'm going to move it so you can actually see what's going on. I'm going to over direct it back just a little bit. Now I've already got my guideline. All I have to do is bring the guideline all the way through. You can see it behind the section there. And because we're creating a round layer, you want to follow the curve of the head. So we're bringing everything out at 90 off the curve of the head to create that round layer. Remember, I've just cut the length in the back. I haven't cut anything in the front or in front of the ear yet. What I typically do is just follow that layer all the way down, and then after I dry it, I go back through and personalize it, and I get that little bit of length off in the front, or create that shape that I want to create. Now, all I'm doing is over-directing it back just a little bit, and I'm taking diagonal forward sections just slightly, you can see here, but following the wagon wheel section which we saw at the start all we're really doing is connecting the front to the back 
but we're going to leave the fringe area out because I'm going to go back in and I'm going to do that a little bit different. Again, just working all the way around, but once I get to the front, I'm going to leave a triangle section out where we're going to create a bit of a fringe on the haircut. And then basically all we're going to do is move on to the other side and do it exactly the same thing but we're leaving that triangle section out in the front. Okay so here's that front part the fringe area which I was talking about. I leave a pretty heavy triangle section because what I'm going to do is I'm going to over direct this all the way back. I'm going to keep a little bit of length in the front, but you can see by taking diagonal forward sections, just taking it straight up at 90 still, but over directing everything back just slightly. Going a little bit heavier because I want to leave it a little bit longer in the front, that fringe area. So once I dry it, we can go through and texturize it and just personalize everything. <laughs> I really like the way this haircut's looking. You're starting to see the shape now and the round layer. And what I love most about this is that it's still got the length. So once we go through and dry it, we can go through and personalize it. But you can see the shape and the layers. And the best way to really notice this is actually by picking it up and turning her head upside down. You can see the layers. Like if I could do this to a client, but you can see the round shape that we've created. Now obviously you're not going to ask your client to flip her head upside down so you can see it, but it's just so you guys can see it, what I'm looking at. So let's just go through and dry it and finish the haircut off. I'm going to be using my own The Serum, it's got the macadamia nut oil in it and we're going to put in wet hair and it's just going to make the hair glossy. There's no hold to this, but we're going to use about 3 or 4 pumps and just apply it before we put any heat on it. Now I'm just going to go through it with a vent brush and just dry it in every direction. Uh, this is how I'd dry it on a client. I'd just use a vent brush and pushing it in every direction just to smooth it all out because the haircut's going to create the shape for me. And by using the serum, I know I'm not going to get any flyaways or the humidity is not going to make it go too crazy. That's why I love using the serum because it just smooths everything out really quickly. Let's speed this up to get through the drying process, but once it's completely dry, now I can go through and I can personalize that front part. Look, I love the shape of this haircut. You can already see the round layers that we've created and the movement, and this is even before I texturize it. Once I've got that dry, I'm going to go through and I'm going to take diagonal sections and work on that front area, the fringe area, where we've kept it a little bit longer because I've over-directed it. Basically just going through pinching it a little bit and closing the scissor halfway to create some movement and texture. Some people call this a sliding technique or a channeling technique. I actually just like it because it creates a lot of movement and gives it that choppy texture without actually using a razor blade. You know, I don't want to split the hair shaft or anything like that, especially on a mannequin head. We're just going to go through the whole thing and just personalize it and make it really wispy. You can go through and point cut the ends, give it a lot of texture. And now just to finish the whole thing off, I'm going to use Ice by the Salon Guy. It's actually a styling pomade, but what I've found on the mannequin heads, it gives it a lot of shine and gloss and brings out the texture. And you can use this on clients that, or on women that have really coarse hair, and it works amazing. Um, it's designed for men typically, but I found that on coarse hair, you know, women, it gives it this really cool finish. 
camera kept going in and out of focus. It drove me crazy. I apologize about that, but let's go ahead and use just a little bit and we're going to work it through the hair and just finish the haircut off. I love this haircut. I think it worked out awesome. I love the shape. I love the texture and the round layers. I just want to say thank you for watching the whole video and making it all the way through it. And if this is the first time you've come across one of my videos, I would love you to check out some of my other stuff. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. And don't forget to share it with your friends. Hey, I'd love to get some feedback. And let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this haircut. Or if you've done this haircut. Or if you do it different. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. But anyways, I'll catch you next week. <laughs>